Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the 15 minute chart, live chart from ClarkMoody.com of the Mt. Gox Bitcoin price. Now, before I get into some analysis of this, I want to show you the history that I've covered on the blog. You can see from my post on the 12th of February that this chart and I want to emphasize here the basis of technical analysis is the idea that all of the actors together know information that you don't know and therefore there's going to be information contained in price that you can't get anywhere else now of course if you're an insider or if you have some kind of inside information about a market then yes you may be able to have more information than the market price indicates by and large that doesn't include most people most people just have the price information or a little snippet of some inside information certainly don't have the big picture so the biggest picture you're always going to be able to see for 99.9% .9 of the people is the market itself and that when markets begin to lie then you don't have any information at all now this is the chart I did when the steadiness of this decline was indicated you can see it's by this downtrend line here and there was no significant violation of the trend line we were just getting further and further drops and that's why I drew this big arrow now the next chart that I posted here is a comparison of the decline that happened in Lehman Brothers before their bankruptcy you can see going straight to zero and a chart from Gox where we we're down to 258 it seemed to me that the charts were trading in very similar fashion this next chart here was from the 17th and this is where we were starting to see these kind of dead cat bounces in the price and it was indicating that there was attempted rallies that looked legitimate but some of the price behavior wasn't wasn't looking really believable and that's when we got this next chart that I posted on the 19th yesterday and that's when we started to get these very anomalous sorts of price moves these flat lines that you see when you see a flat line like that that's something you don't see in a real market that's something that you only see in a fake or controlled market real markets don't behave that way and then the chart I posted today was a indication of where the buy this buy floor that's why I call this flat line uh, collapsed and the reason I knew it was going to collapse is because I knew it was fake so that takes us back to the chart and you can see here it's very very clear that this is a fake floor if you go back out you can see where I originally saw that is actually right here let's go back in a little bit closer so this floor right here was the first one that told me that something was wrong then when I saw it rally and settle on this floor for a long time I knew something was very very wrong and then we got a drop a little floor and then a massive decline we had a fairly steady decline until today we got another floor and we'll move in on that you can see that is not a real market now what we've just had recently let's do a refresh and get to the one minute this may be encouraging for some this is actually you can see we hit that low there down around 90 bucks and we're rallying up to around 115 this is actually the first time we've seen a penetration above that fake floor if you go back and look in the past when we put in one of these fake things the decline never goes up above it it just rallies back up or just simply collapses completely that's what we've been seeing this is the first time we're seeing that is this accompanied by news out of Mt. Gox I don't know we'll find out definitely so 
my prediction based upon this price action so far what we've seen that Mt. Gox appears to be controlling the price of the Bitcoin decline a managed decline what is behind that I have no idea I have no idea what the solvency of that concern is I don't know if they were hacked for dollars I don't know if they were hacked for bitcoins it seems to me that they are blaming Bitcoin it doesn't appear to be there has been a sell-off but it doesn't appear to be mirrored in the other exchanges you can see a bottom coming in 544 on BTCE for the US dollar a lot of these markets are bogged right now and so it's hard to even get quotes if we go over to Bitcoin wisdom now they're finally starting to load so you can see let's go over to Bitstamp a big decline on Bitstamp at the same time we had the Gox decline but nothing like the decline on Mt. Gox now we're actually seeing a little bit of a rally here let's go all the way in for the last couple of hours there's just been absolutely nothing on Bitcoin wisdom I think they're probably just overloaded so you can see the other markets Bitstamp at 558 BTCE at 535 Mt. Gox at 111 and then the Chinese exchange at 568 so actually if we take out Gox we have a tighter arbitrage between these three markets than we've ever seen before now of course we should have a much tighter arbitrage between these the difference between 568 and 538 is obviously an opportunity that somebody could make a tremendous amount of money on if they had the ability to move rapidly both Bitcoin and currency between exchanges the fact that this arbitrage spread is so wide proves that these are still not freely traded markets in other words there's a bottleneck now initially the only bottleneck we had was the dollar the sovereign currency bottleneck the anti-money laundering issues the ability to get money onto an exchange or off of an exchange that being impeded by government regulations nothing to do with markets totally uh, has to do with governments interfering in markets especially with these anti money laundering uh, regulations now, I've already talked about those before we know that the major money launderers in the world the UN has already told us that the drug trade is trillions of dollars and the only place that money could be laundered is the Wall Street banks so we know they're the money launderers. Money laundering laws are an excuse to regulate the competition and to impose Big Brother in people's lives. It has nothing to do with what it supposedly is created for. But those laws impact the ability to arbitrage these different markets. Now I expect to see these tighten up and I don't know. The trading action is looking interesting now. I don't know if, if Gox is going to come back into the game. If Gox actually makes it back into the game, then I think a lot of people uh, could have gotten a great deal. But my question is, who would actually send money to an exchange that isn't allowing withdrawals? I can't imagine that much money is flowing onto that exchange. So let's go over to a Charles Hughes Smith article that's on Zero Hedge. Now, it's very interesting to me that this article banks are obsolete and this is going to show you what a drain these parasites are on the world and and the economies of all the nations what's interesting here is Bitcoin isn't even mentioned it doesn't really matter that Bitcoin isn't mentioned because the facts are the facts we'll read a little bit of this and then I want to take a quick look at the altcoin market so this is Charles Hughes Smith of two minds blog what else can we do with the 1.25 trillion dollars we'll save by eliminating these obsolete financial middlemen parasites a lot technology has leapfrogged the banking sector rendering it as obsolete as buggy whips so why are we devoting nine percent of our economy to an obsolete parasite 
Financial sector profits now total a staggering 4.5% of GDP, while expenses generated by financial churning account for another 4.5% of the economy. And there's a chart here. Debt to GDP and financial profits. Software and existing non-Wall Street too-big-to-fail institutions could replace the entire Wall Street banking sector and drop costs to 0.5% of GDP, saving us 8-plus percent of our GDP, or $1.25 trillion, that is currently siphoned off by parasitic middlemen. The banking sector is Exhibit A in the middleman skimming economy. The pull of habit and propaganda is so strong that most people haven't even recognized that software and the web can replace the entire financial banking sector for a fraction of the cost of the current parasitic system. A system that, as we all know, has captured the regulatory and governance machinery of the central state, making a mockery of democracy. The benefits of eliminating the financial banking sector are immense and far-reaching. What exactly do banks do? Banks perform these basic functions. One, they hold depositors' money. Two, they act as a clearinghouse for payments, transferring funds from payor to payee. They issue loans on a fractional reserve basis. And four, they originate and trade derivatives, run high-speed trading desks, operate various money laundering and embezzlement schemes, influence elected officials with lobbying campaign contributions, and subvert both free market capitalism and democracy at every turn. This entire parasitic middleman sector could be replaced with automated digital clearinghouses and crowdfunded or non-bank loans. Why do we need banks to pay bills online? We don't. Any clearinghouse could charge a small fee for the transaction. Why do we need banks when loans can be crowdfunded? If we can invest money in startups via Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Rocket Hub, AngelList, etc., why can't we own a piece of someone's auto loan or home mortgage? The web and software now enable the elimination of the entire middleman skimming operation of banking. And it goes on. Someone says down here in the comments below, why didn't you mention Bitcoin? Good question. Why didn't he mention Bitcoin? I don't know. But nevertheless, all of those points are true. The banking system is an obsolete system of financial middlemen parasites. That's what Bitcoin is going to eliminate. There's no stopping it. Now, Gox so far has made the claim that this problem that they're having is because of Bitcoin. I don't buy it. I don't think a lot of people buy it. I think when the dust settles and the smoke clears, we're probably going to see some people going to jail over this because it's looking like there may be serious financial fraud going on here with Gox. We'll find out when the dust settles. Now, let's look over here at the crypto coins. This is the reason why I've always argued that the alt crypto coins are very, very important. This is starting to explode something like designer drugs. They simply can't stop it because there are now 399 cryptocurrency trading pairs. Is there a flaw in Bitcoin? This latest flaw that they're talking about? Perhaps. But is there another coin out here that solves that problem? Most likely. Are there going to be a lot more coins? Yes. Is there any way they can stop this? No. There's no way that they can stop this. The writing is on the wall for the banking sector. The banking sector is obsolete. It will be done away with probably within the next decade. Bitcoin could be the replacement. Maybe something else will be the replacement. This, I believe, is probably going to be the last attack, the last substantial attack in this particular bull phase of Bitcoin. This is a complete wipeout in the long term. You can see we're actually down below a 50% move from the last high. This is a complete wipeout when we look at the Gox chart. But, but if we look at Bitstamp, this correction is now approaching 
where we were on the last correction before we started to stabilize and then rally. That would project probably a price of four to five hundred for the stabilization and then a flat lining in between those until we get a move to the upside. Certainly none of that's going to happen until the Mt. Gox issue is settled finally and people know actually what happened in that situation. I think we're going to know fairly soon and we'll talk to you next time.